Don't know about you, but I got all choked up over one of those pictures. So hey, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I'm super easy to find. I'm Tim Bray on every online service known to humankind. Normally, here's where I tell you who it is I work for, but only I'm not at the moment. I'm taking the summer off and trying to figure out what to do this fall. Those pretty pictures are from my blog, and they're on the screen just to be relaxing and also to let you know that we're not going to have any slides today. I'm just going to show you some browser tabs. So despite the fact that my title is Threats, I'm actually a pretty cheery guy. The Internet is reaching more people than it ever has. Software people have more and better tools than I've ever seen. And our opportunity to reach out and improve the lives of the people of the world using software is better than it's ever been. But we do have threats, and we've got to worry about them. One of the threats is us, ourselves. Look around. What I'm looking at is mostly a bunch of highly privileged male people, mostly white or Asian. We are at some risk of starting to be a monoculture. I don't know about you, but I spent the first 10 years of my open source life fighting against a particular monoculture, and I'm not fond of monocultures. So I'm not going to talk about this much because I don't really have a good call to action, but I, I have a link I'd like to share with you to an online publication called Model View Culture that worries about this stuff all the time, and their current issue is about open source. And later on uh, this morning, we're going to have... Uh, um, what, what is it? Uh, Valerie Hoth Leslie Hawthorne will be along to talk some more about this stuff. So let's talk about technology. Enough about that. So here's something that I think is a real growing th uh, uh, threat, and it's our old friend and enemy, yak shaving. Just recently, I started making some small contributions to this uh, open source project called uh, Open Keychain that um, uh, makes Open PGP stuff really easy on Android. And, you know, I, I already knew Java and Android, so I thought I'd just have to learn about keys and subkeys and key servers and that kind of stuff, which I did, except for I've been stuck for the last few days fighting a combination of Git submodule weirdness and totally opaque Gradle errors. You know, you know Git submodules. Just let me say this about that. Ah! <laughs> and then what happened was I tried to build, and I couldn't, and I, and I couldn't understand the stupid groovy error messages. And I went looking and following obvious pointers and pulled up this uh, in the Gradle manual. And let me observe that is chapter freaking 50 out of 65 in the build tool. Let me say this about that. Ah! <laughs> so the, that's the threat, the act shaving, that the amount of time that we actually spend crafting and refining software becomes a smaller and smaller part of our work because we spend so much time fighting source code control systems and build systems and dependency management and all that other crap. These days I hear a certain amount of talk about being a full stack developer. And that makes me kind of nervous because it sounds to me like I'm going to spend all my time yak shaving. Let's not go there. Now seriously, both Node.js and Go are doing some interesting stuff in trying to minimize yak shaving. And good on them. And that's something I think we all need to worry about a lot. But I'm not going to talk any more about that because I want to talk about the real threat that keeps me up at night. A real non-allegorical, non-metaphorical threat threat as in where bad people want to do bad, or sorry, bad, where people want to do bad things to you. Now notice that I carefully didn't say bad people because some of the people who are trying to do bad things aren't necessarily bad, they're just wrong. For example, the employees of the National Security Agency or whatever the equivalent is in your country. So having said that, some of the people who are doing bad things are indeed bad people. Let me introduce you to some of them. This is a website called buyaccess.com where you can, it's in Russian, where you can go and buy stolen accounts at really very moderate prices. So the threat I'm talking about here is what seems to me like the big one. The people out there trying to steal your users' accounts and do bad things to them. What we do is write software that by definition deals with other people's information. And if we want to do a good job at our jobs, we have to take great care to take good care of that information while bearing in mind that bad people are out there trying to steal it and do bad things with it. So at a world-leading conference of developers like OSCON, you'd think there'd be all sorts of stuff on the program about security and privacy and, and threat re reduction and that kind of stuff, and there is not. Now, I'm not going to blame OSCON because, unfortunately, um, you know, particularly given that we are, after all, in the era of Ed Snowden. Um, yeah, round of applause for Ed. Um, I think that we don't want to talk about this stuff because it involves two horrible things. The first is really hard math, and the second is politics. But I'm going to argue that you should get interested, and here's why. First of all, you can ignore the math these days. There's good libraries for that. And as for the politics, politics and policy are reality. 
And if you want to blow that stuff off, well, you've just lost the right to complain about the things that you don't like. So, so go out there and do some of that. So the organizations that are causing us the most concern these days are, of course, our own governments. And uh, who think it's a good idea to scoop up everything and keep it forever. Well, are they right? Uh, after all, they're just trying to protect us. And if you don't have anything to hide, why should you worry? Let me give you five reasons why that's complete BS. First of all, folks are just people. Most of them are good, but being people, some of them are crooked or crazy or just stupid. Secondly, they're incredibly powerful. You know, they, they can ruin up your life. They can ruin your life. They also have a tendency to tribal culture, where law enforcement professionals tend to look inside, and this can lead to things like the current events in Thailand. So we want to be careful what information they have. They want to put a back door on our network so they can see everything that's going on. But there's no such thing as a one-way back door, and the bad guys are looking for the back door, and they're finding them. The amount of money going into national security is just stupid compared to the size of the problem compared to things like texting while driving. Privacy is important not because it enables anything. It's important for its own sake. We are members of a civilization. That means we do not have to go to the creek to fetch water. We do not have to defecate in a ditch. Our, doors, our houses have walls that are soundproof and doors that close. We can go behind them and we can do what we want. And that's a basic benefit of being in a civilization. And we should be proud to fight against anybody who wants to take that away from you. So, so, so what can we do? What can we do about this? The first thing is obvious. We have audience participation. Uh, lights up, please. Does anybody, everybody in this room is doing apps. Can the people who are using HTTPS hold your hands up? Excellent. That's excellent. It's better than I thought, but it's not everybody. For the other people in the room, what you want to do is schedule a meeting with legal when you get back and ask legal, hey, is it okay if we're doing our, our, offering our service in such a way that any stranger who's technically competent can spy on it? Can I have legal sign off on that? You know, I don't think you're going to get it. The second thing we, can, we, we should do is we should go out and we should uh, learn something called, um, I'm going to skip that one, something called uh, OpenPGP, RFC 4880, which you should not re-implement, but you should study and learn. It's not hard. It's easy to use. There are, uh, there are uh, good, uh, uh, that's, what a, that's what an OpenPGP message looks like. There are good libraries, and there's this excellent library called NewPG. New PG. There are excellent uh, implementations in Go and uh, uh, Ruby and Python and Node.js, but not Java or .NET. Can we please get on that? So if there is a, if you're doing a, a project in a, in a language that supports free encryption, why would you not do it? Let's get out there and take good care of our users. Okay, I'm about out of time. So some of the, we have these threats we have to deal with. Some of the solutions are only available by going into politics. And so we should do some of that. But some of them are, are available to us as engineers, and we should just go ahead and start using them without asking anybody's permission. Thank you. Bye.